Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. Now, we've got two fairly spicy videos today, and this is the first of them. It can't have failed to capture people's attention that most of the serious Conservative Party leadership candidates are committing to taking the UK out of the EU by the 31st of October, deal or no deal. In the case of Dominic Raab, he's also said he would do so even if Parliament voted to block him from doing it. In fact, of all the front runners, it seems that only Jeremy Hunt has said that he would not pursue a no deal Brexit. But even in his case, he's saying that that's because of the damage it would do to the party. Nothing to do with the country. Now, in the light of this push towards self-destruction, Philip Hammond, the Chancellor, has issued a stark warning to the likes of Johnson, Raab and McVeigh. As Chancellor, Hammond is one of the most senior Conservative MPs. Accepted political wisdom is that the Chancellor is selected by not just being a stalwart ally of the Prime Minister, which is fairly essential, but someone who also commands respect in the majority of the Parliamentary Party. In other words, he has supporters. But I have said before that Hammond has been pretty quiet during the Brexit process. The only time he's ever had anything to say about it was to discuss the economic harm caused by failing to arrange a deal with the EU before exiting. And that's something that, of course, he's duty-bound to do as part of his role as Chancellor. Other ministers have felt free to discuss aspects of Brexit outside of the scope of their ministry. But Hammond, Hammond's warnings aren't political. As reinforced by yet another warning this week by the Confederation of British Industry, the CBI have been warning of the devastating consequences to British businesses of a no-deal Brexit, especially for small business owners, the bread and butter of Conservative support. In this vein, Philip Hammond has threatened that if the new Prime Minister adopts a course of no deal, he will take them out. He has nailed his colours to the mast and said this issue is more important than party politics and that he will put country before party. Now there's a refreshing change of pace. And he hasn't been coy as to how he'd do this. Not that he really has options. He would vote against the party in a confidence motion in the new Prime Minister if they even look like they're getting ready to take us out without a deal. That would be especially crucial in the case of Dominic Raab being made Prime Minister as he has promised to ignore Parliament. In other words, if Parliament votes for him to go to the EU and negotiate yet another extension, he would simply refuse. He believes that if a Parliament does what it's done in the past and has voted for this at the 11th hour, his refusal to do it would leave Parliament with no way of stopping him. So Parliament would have to act at least two weeks before 31st of October. But it's an equal danger from other leadership candidates as well. Let's say, for example, Boris Johnson, although he's saying he's going to take us out on 31st of October, let's say he becomes the new Prime Minister, but he goes along with a vote by Parliament to seek another extension and goes, well, it's Parliament that's told me to do it. He'd be crucified by the hardline Brexiteers who are currently backing him. And bear in mind, they're the only ones currently backing him. Philip Hammond threatening to take out his own government is nothing new, of course. The ERG, who will be the first and loudest to shout traitor at him if he does it, has threatened to do just that with Theresa May on at least two occasions in the Commons. The main protection against such action for a new Prime Minister is that most MPs wouldn't be willing to do this even if they very strongly oppose what Johnson or any new Prime Minister would be wanting to do, they wouldn't actually vote against their own government. For all the recent talk about what should and should not get you expelled from a political party, I'm going to guess that voting against your own party in a confidence motion in the Commons is definitely on the list of good reasons to expel. For an MP as an implicit pact with its party, the party helps you get elected, something for which you're now getting a decent income for not having to do a great deal at all. That's why you joined the party, because you couldn't do it on your own. The pact states that you generally toe the party line and vote as the leader tells you. Of course, some MPs take that pact more seriously than others. Jeremy Corbyn was quite famous for not taking it seriously at all. And sometimes it's understood that the party would be at odds with the interests of your constituents, to whom you also have a loyalty. But to kill off your own party in government and trigger a general election is almost certainly the end of your parliamentary career. As such, the profile of people willing to do it would need to be either that they're at the end of their parliamentary career anyway, and so lose nothing from doing it, or are so consumed with righteous fury that they just don't care. 
Philip Hammond is unlikely to retain his lofty position under a new Prime Minister and would not scale such heights again. At 63 years of age, it would also not seem a career cut short if he effectively retired from Parliament at this point. But he'd need some others to follow him. So how likely is that? Well, there have been others who've said that they would do this. So at this point, it's worth bearing in mind that the majority of even Conservative MPs are opposed to a no-deal Brexit. Even the ones who support Brexit do not want a no-deal Brexit. When the vote for this was put to the Commons, about 100 MPs voted in favour of no-deal. And it's believed a couple dozen of those only did so because they knew it would lose and wanted to pretend that they're OK with it due to their heavily leave-supporting constituents. Either way, most Tory MPs want nothing to do with Brexit if it means a ruinous no deal. But as I already said, those who don't want to see their parliamentary career cut short would much rather someone else throw themselves in front of Boris's Brexit bus. So then we look at the parliamentary arithmetic. The new Prime Minister will have a majority of four. And that's with the support of the DUP that was bought with a billion pounds of public money. Now, there's a by-election in Peterborough that Labour seem to think could end up in the hands of the Brexit party. I'm still not sure how, as most Labour voters are Remain and the constituency was a pretty much a 50-50 between Labour and the Conservatives. Yes, it was a significantly Leave constituency, but still, most Labour voters are the Remainers. So, the Brexit party would surely take more votes from the Conservatives from Labour, which actually should help Labour out. But I don't know. Let's say the Brexit party win the seat. I, I couldn't actually say. They would, of course, back the Prime Minister in that confidence vote because they want them to take us out with no deal. So they, the Conservatives, even if they didn't win the seat, would effectively get a seat when it comes to a confidence motion. There might be one independent MP that might do it as well. So you might need four or five Tory rebels to bring down the new Prime Minister if they set themselves on a course of no deal just four or five out of about 200 or more than 200 who are opposed to a no deal in the Conservative Party. With two people already committed to do it, including Philip Hammond, I'd say that can be easily managed. And the fact that Hammond and, as I say, a few others have talked about this, this confidence vote in the government, and not just the leader. They could be talking about issuing a vote of no confidence in the leader, which is much less treasonous. Shows how deadly they are. So although there aren't the numbers for a general election now, the new Prime Minister might find themselves at the wrong end of a confidence vote if they don't deliver Brexit by 31st of August, with uh, October, sorry, with the ERG threatening to bring them down, and definitely facing one if they do try and take us out with no deal. So Theresa May's tenure as Prime Minister may have been extremely short, but it could well be that there is nothing the next incumbent can do to manage even a fraction of her time in number 10. Not that the new Prime Minister would necessarily have to resign, but if the latest polling figures are true, then a general election before the end of the year, unless something changes massively, is unlikely to see the Conservatives return to power. But more on that in my next video today. So I hope you found this one interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe for further content, and until next time, I'll see you later.